What's up, everybody? The History Guy here. Well, I'm taking a slight and temporary diversion from my current Ultimate General Civil War legendary campaign to bring you something I did a while back just because I thought it would be a fun distraction. We're going to do a what-if battle, and this is a completely uh, fantasy-only kind of thing because this would never happen in real life. But my question is, what if... Marie's Heights was not defended by infantry, but only by massive amounts of artillery. Would that have been enough to stop the Union advance? So we're going to find out. We're going to take on the Confederates. We're going to go Brigadier General so there's no bonuses or penalties. And we are going to create our own scenario in which I'm going to take nothing but uh, artillery. So uh, we're going to get rid of all of these units and I guess what I'm going to have to do is actually go in and just build this from scratch because it looks like it's not giving me any money. Yeah, so I wanted to hit own battle, not scenario. So let's go back to that and do this the right way. So we have nothing to start. We have $750,000, 35,000 men. And so we're going to create this completely from scratch. Now, I know I'm going to be pretty limited in what I have. So let me just go ahead and do this and we'll come right back. All right, so here's my first core. I'm going to go with three divisions, each with five batteries of 12 guns. Uh, and each one of these has, uh, has two batteries of 12-pound Napoleons, as well as three batteries of 24-pounders. So each one, every one of these guns, all 180 of them are smooth bores. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a second core, and uh, we'll get that one built up. And then we're going to give it a try. And so the question becomes first, can it be done? And if so, how many guns will it take? So we're going to start kind of small and work our way up to see how many guns it would take to be able to defend Marie's Heights with only artillery. Okay, I'm almost certain this is not going to be enough, but we've got uh, 288 guns. Uh, Second Corps, I've put uh, six more batteries of 12-pound Napoleons along with three more batteries of 24-pounders. We're not going to take any supply because there's a lot of... Well, actually... I think we will because even though there is supply on this battle, it's not mobile supply. So I want to have that added benefit of having supply available that I can shift around as needed. Though I think I'm going to get overrun fairly quickly this way. I just don't see this being enough to hold off all of those Union troops. So, but it's a place to start. Oh, uh, we're actually going to be over here on the right with the other th core. Okay, I see what's going on here. That's definitely going to be a problem. We're facing down 57,000 men. Uh, it looks like it is going to give me some soldiers here that I didn't ask for, but um, that's how it goes. So unfortunately, we're going to have to start moving all these guys over. Uh, I just don't think they're going to get there nearly in enough time to really make any difference. I guess that's just the way that it does this, but... Uh, we'll start moving them over here as quick as we can. We've got to get everybody up nice and close because these are smooth bores and they really don't do a lot of good from the rear. So uh, I think we'll hold the ones we've got there. We'll start moving these other ones up. We definitely want to have multiple lines because he's going to overrun the first lines and that's certainly going to become a problem for me. So we'll just go ahead and see what happens. I, I just... There's no way we hold off for six hours, especially since I've got to shift a lot of these units over and there's just no way they're going to get there in time coming through these woods. So we're really just dealing with 15 batteries that are going to be holding off against all these guys. And I'm thinking maybe I might add some rifled artillery uh, at some point here. Just to kind of deal with some of his. Let's get these guys moved up. So once he overruns my line, I'm certainly going to have major issues because there's no way I'm going to be able to hold him off. Oh, we managed to drive Nagel off. So you can see up here at the top, it's 51,000 against 1,200. He's actually got almost as many guns as I do. So we'll definitely need to get some long-range artillery out here that we can wipe those guys out with. Well, 
the first two batteries are going to get in here fairly quickly. He's rushing over here to take the other objective. I don't care about that. I don't... I'm not trying to defend that. I'm just trying to defend Marie's Heights. But I guess we'll just leave these guys here because they're never going to make it over there anyway. This will be interesting here. Okay, so, so maybe this can work. <laughs> if, he, if he could just get enough guys there at one time, he could probably do some real damage to me. Looks like this is the real problem for me right here. Maybe. Alright, so far we have already caused 1,300 casualties and surprisingly taken out six of his guns. Just gonna keep an eye on supply. I guess we're good because we've got these supplies here. This is really the perfect battle for a sustained artillery defense because it's got those built in supplies. gonna have to hit these guys before they can get far enough up on my flank to cause problems. Alright, right there. Here comes another advance. I believe at the historic battle of Fredericksburg there were something like seven charges total. I could be wrong about that number for some reason that's sticking out in my mind as being what it was. All right, here they come. We'll see if my first line gets overrun here. I expected that to happen at some point. Don't everybody hit the same brigade. There's my first brigade, uh, first battery finally being overrun. I'm a little concerned he's getting up here and I can't see them. I should have left a battery up there. Alright, seems like we're doing our job here because all that water is making it easy. Yeah, he's definitely going to overrun. Yeah, he overruns Sam, uh, Sems. They're going to get knocked out. Hayes probably as well. Looks like Hodgson might get it here, right here. All right, where are we at now? He's down to 47,000 men. We've taken out 4,000 so far, not even 10% of his force. And I've actually lost about 10% of my men. Man, he's really getting around my flank. We're gonna need additional artillery up in here to make this work. Too many on, on my extreme left. Probably going to need to put some down in here as well. This is a great way to just see the power of a large amount of artillery and what they can do. Some of my batteries really haven't caused that many casualties yet.
Oh, General Hudson was killed over here on the right flank, on the left flank. We've taken out 6,000 men. We've lost some guns for a change. All right, let's just skip ahead and, and see where this takes us in another hour or two. All right, well, 452 to go. He's just about behind my left flank now, so it's definitely gonna end badly, I think. Although, I mean, I guess we might be able to, I, I should have probably done this sooner. He just took the North Heights, that's fine. This may be too little too late on shifting batteries over to the side, but maybe that's what I do, is I just defend right in here and let him come up, but I think I, I can do more damage if I hit him coming up the hill. All right, we've taken out 20% of his men. I've lost 40 guns. We'll see how this finishes out. All right, so he's starting to overrun my, my left flank now. So we know now a little better what we need to do, though we did take out 13,000 of his men. Uh, so we're gonna do a couple of things and get retooled and try this again. Okay, so this time I've added a fourth division to my first corps. A mix of uh, Napoleons and 24 pounders and of course we'll go with a slightly different strategy I'll get the supplies going and we'll see how that happens okay so here we go and same deal we're gonna kind of keep everybody where they are here up front I'm actually gonna move these guys back a little bit here onto a second line let's get some units into these fortifications I'm going to get one over here. I have a couple more that are coming across there. We've got a unit up here already. I'm actually going to move another one. Maybe like to right here, right in front of this swampy area. And then I've shifted some of these. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold a couple of them as a kind of a protection for my flank. And again, initially, we should beat them back pretty easily. It's gonna be long term that I, I think I really have to worry. Oh yeah, General Kershaw, you might want to get back. So there's the Irish Brigade right here under Maher. We'll see if uh, we can get him before he gets any closer to my battery. There we go. He's actually breaking into my force for some reason. He's going to try his thing again to get around, but I'm not going to let it happen this time. These guys are in the water. They're in the perfect position for me to really light them up. Go ahead and bring these guys down for now. I can always shift them back up if I need to. All right, we've taken out 2,500 men. It's a really small percentage of his force so far. He's still got units that are coming across the bridge, so. All right, got a big charge happening over here on my right. This could get interesting.
Come on, fire at the guys that are right in front of your face. They're shooting at you. I believe that's Joseph Revere, who I think was a grandson or a great-grandson of Paul Revere. I did a video about uh, about the connections between the American Revolutionary War and the Civil War. Uh, I'll put a link uh, in the description below as well as on the uh, the end credits for this video so you can check that out. I also did one just talking about 10 interesting facts about the Battle of Fredericksburg. Uh, so I'll put both of those in the description as well as in the, uh, in the links, uh, the videos that pop up right before the end screen. I think we may hold this time. Uh, I'm actually taking a lot worse damage on my right than I did before. So it just kind of shows you how from one playthrough to the next the enemy does tend to st change his strategy depending on what you do. Get these guys shifted over there. Now this is a bit of a problem for me right now I think. Let's see where we're at. So we've actually taken out about 6,400 men so far and four guns. We've lost 17 guns already. So I've actually lost more guns than I did at this point last time. He broke through a little better over here, I think is why. All right, we've got to hit Ward. He's the primary threat at the moment. Seems like they've largely ignored the center here. So I'm going to go ahead and send some additional resources over that way. Because he's getting dangerously close over here. And he, now he's going to start attempting his crossing on this side. sure what he's doing here except that he's marching really far around. I'm going to pull these guys out. There's really no reason for them to stay in those fortifications there. All right, I think we're holding for the time being. Let's go ahead and skip ahead in time a little bit and see how this plays out. So it seems he's kind of given up attacking. Now, there they are. I thought he was, but he actually was just kind of retooling. So I'll, I'll change my mind about shifting more of my units over to that side. Now, he was starting to get close to these guys, but there's Swamp right here, and Whiting's just in a great spot to be able to do some real damage. These guys are caught in the water. I haven't even seen where his flanking force has gone to, except that I know they're out there somewhere. Man, he's sending a lot of units over to the left, but most of them have been torn to pieces already. So he's gonna try to go even further to the left, which is fine, because I can pull these guys back if I need to. See where we're at. I'm looking forward to seeing that red line get bigger and bigger as time goes on here. He's down by about 14,000 men now. He's down to just 37,000. I love just watching that number tick down so quickly. All right, here's our first contact with the enemy over here. All the way over on the right side. So he's, he's going for the flanks is what he's doing. All right, and we've got our first ammo issues, which is why it was wise to go ahead and bring some mobile supplies because our kind of extreme flanks need them. Not sure I'm going to be able to re resupply Whiting, and he's getting down there. Look at all the blue laying in front of Maurice Heights, which is how it was historically. I mean, it's probably what it would have looked like. 
All right, why are we not driving this guy away? Probably because of the woods. This might be a little bit of a problem here. Just one brigade seems to be doing the trick. All right, he's down to 34,000 with four hours to go. All right, so we got a little bit of an ammo issue, but though I don't have much supply here, and we have a, a brigade who snuck in over here in that center area. Certainly didn't leave much over there on the right, but I'm not too worried about that. My primary goal here was just to see how well I could defend Marie's Heights. We did just lose a battery altogether right there in the front. Got another one who's down to almost half strength and another one here. So we are taking some significant casualties along the way. But uh, let's see, I've lost 68 guns. So I'm down by, oh, about a, f a fifth, about 20%. But he's down to almost half on his casualties. So he's taking more than I am. So proportionately speaking, I should be okay. I don't think he's gonna have enough to overrun me on Marie's Heights. Now over here's a different story. But that wasn't really my primary goal. I guess the only question is whether or not he's able to push through over there enough to where he comes and threatens the heights. But these guys are just about done. You can see over here, Whiting's going to... Yeah, he just wiped him out. I was just about to say that, although he's down to low supply now. Uh, I guess I could probably get these guys over there to resupply him. It just might take a little while. Let's go ahead and pause and see where things stand, and then we'll skip ahead again. Um... All right, so I've lost 66 guns. He's down to just 26,000 men. So we'll just see what's happening over here. These four depleted brigades of uh, are only about, I don't know, what do we got left over here? Six, 15, 24, 31 guns trying to hold off about 7,000 men. And he's sending more that way. So obviously he sees that he can do something there. Now he's mostly just got artillery over here at this point. It looks like he's pulling them back. Only other thing I might have done differently just to try would have been to load up with some rifled artillery, maybe six or eight batteries, just to target all of his artillery and weaken them. But uh, I've certainly got more than enough smooth bores to hold off the rest of his infantry. So I, I'm gonna consider this one a success. He's down to just 23,000 men and a good bit of them are the ones over here on this side. So we've easily held Marie's Heights with about 250 to 300 guns and no infantry at all. So we'll just kind of let this play out and see what the final totals look like. All right, well, this got interesting because he just marched a bunch of units over from the other side and started hitting me in the flank, and he's just wiping out some of my batteries. So uh, that actually caused me to have to shift some units over to try and protect but uh, unfortunately they're all getting driven off and now he's actually taking the objective so uh, I'm definitely going to have to keep that in mind if I ever want to do something like this again is that if I give up that other objective he's going to sneak in on my flank and he just lit up my batteries so uh, what was going really smoothly turned quickly into a big mess and he's got enough artillery sitting there that as soon as I park a battery on the objective, he wipes it out. I mean, watch this. These guys will disappear in no time. He's got a bunch of artillery fire. Just boom, just like that. So, uh, I mean, it's almost next to nothing. If he marches somebody in on there in the last five minutes, he's going to take it. But um, this isn't about win or, winning or losing the battles. It was just about seeing what I could do. So uh, hopefully you were a little entertained by that as I was. I thought it was just kind of an interesting concept. But it does show you the power of large amounts of artillery. Now imagine that in conjunction with even a small amount of infantry and what they could do. Because none of those artillery units, those were all brand new artillery units. None of them had experience. Uh, they could have been a whole lot more effective. So imagine I come in with 12 batteries of 24 pounders that are all two star and then maybe eight or 10 brigades of infantry. Imagine the damage I would have done then. So that's got me thinking about what I'm going to do when I get to the Battle of Fredericksburg here, which will be in the next week on Legendary, about the power of a lot of artillery in that area. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But let's take a look. Uh, this unit right here, 2,600 kills. There's 25, 25. And again, none of these are experienced. So, so there you have it. That's what a lot of artillery can do. 
uh, at one time. So I hope you liked it. Check out some of those other videos. I'm putting the links up right now to those. They're also in the description below. A little bit more about the Battle of Fredericksburg. So thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you again with a regular episode of the Legendary Campaign, probably Sunday or Monday. Thanks for watching.